Hi everyone, I'm Mike Preston, Technical Marketing Architect here at Rubrik, and welcome back to a series of videos where we're covering off everything from Rubrik and GraphQL. Today, we're going to dive into the world of GraphQL queries. We'll talk about what they are, how we form them, and how to actually get some data out of Rubrik using them. With that, let's dive in. All right, just a quick heads up. Throughout the next few videos, I'll be using something called the Rubrik GraphQL Playground. It's a nifty little tool that helps us explore the options available to us within the GraphQL schema. It has some built-in documentation and just makes things overall easier for us, especially if you're just getting started. If you want to follow along, the URL is on the screen. Go ahead and download it. It's a free tool and I certainly recommend checking it out. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. So previously we've talked about why Rubrik made the move to GraphQL, and over the next few videos, we'll begin exploring some of the main GraphQL concepts. Now, if you remember, I said that GraphQL is a query-based language, so the first core concept that I think everyone should really know about is, well, the query. So Every single GraphQL implementation has a query root type that defines the entry point that GraphQL is going to use to fetch data. And, you know, this is really no different in the case of Rubrik's implementation. So if we take a quick look at the Rubrik API documentation, and we'll select reference up here, and then query, we can see all of the queries that are available to us. For instance, we can see here a query to get all of our availability zones uh, within a specified AWS region. Or the next one in the list here handles retrieving a list of all of our defined AWS cloud accounts within the Rubrik Security Cloud. Now we can also view this documentation within the GraphQL Playground as well. I'll just simply type vSphere VM in our Doc Explorer on the right, and we can see some queries available containing that text. So let's explore one. Let's drill into the vSphere VM new connection, and let's actually begin building out our first GraphQL query using this. Now, any GraphQL call needs to begin by specifying the type of action we want to perform. In this case, it's a query, so we'll just type query. So from there, let's go ahead and type our query name. And you'll start to see why I suggested using the GraphQL Playground for learning. We get a lot of cool features here, and probably the most useful is being the autocomplete of our syntax. So now we have our query and our query type defined. Let's take a look at the next step. If we drill into our docs, we can see how we can define an edge, which if we read, it tells us we can use this if we need to use pagination. Since we don't in this case, we'll just use this nodes field instead. So let's go ahead and add our nodes into our query. So with node there, it's now just a matter of specifying what fields we want returned. Remember, with GraphQL, we can specify only these fields we want. Whereas with REST, we need to get all of the complete objects back. So we can discover what fields are available to us in a number of ways. We can drill into our nodes object and take a look at the fields available within the docs. Or we can simply hit control space to trigger our autocomplete. So let's go ahead and let's select ID, name, and effective SLA domain. And then we can simply just run this query. So there we have it, our first query against Rubrik's GraphQL implementation. We retrieved a list of all of our VMs, their ID, name, and assigned SLA domain. Now, if you come from a REST world, you can almost think of queries mapping to endpoints. For VMs, we use a certain endpoint. For EC2 instances, we'll use another. In GraphQL, instead of hitting the endpoints, we actually just send a POST request which contains all the different queries to the exact same endpoint, which by the way is gonna be the URL of your Rubrik Security Cloud instance, followed by slash API slash GraphQL. Now, since we're using the playground, all of that translation around the URI is happening for us, so we don't really need this information right now, but I wanted to point it out because it will be useful to you when you begin using external tools like PowerShell. Another thing we can do is give our queries a name. Now we do this by simply inputting the name directly after the query syntax. So in this case, let's call it all VMs. 
This is super useful if we're gonna be reusing queries throughout our code, as we could just reference the query by its name, and we know the rest of the syntax will always be the same. So thus far, we've got a list of all of our VMs, but what if we wanted to return only a subset of these, say, only VMs that contain M Preston in their name? Well, if you think back to REST, this is usually handled by something called query parameters, like adding the dollar sign name equals to the end of our URI. And if the architecture didn't have that query parameter defined, uh, well, you had to go ahead and retrieve everything and then do the filtering client side on your own, another costly implementation of the REST architecture. In Rubrik's implementation of GraphQL, we can filter by simply providing some details to our filter argument. So if we back out to our query docs again, we can see this filter argument that is accepted. So let's go ahead and add that. Let me just duplicate my actual query here and I'll give it a new name. Let's call it filtered VMs and let's add our filter in. So we'll start by adding brackets to host our arguments and then we'll add the actual filter argument, open up some new JSON and give it some values. In this case, we'll pass in the field which we want to filter on, which is name, and the text which we want to use for that filter, which is M Preston. So if we go ahead and run this newly created query, we can see we're only getting those VMs starting with M Preston back in our list now. So one more GraphQL concept that I wanted to cover is something called fragments. So as you can see, we have a couple of queries defined now, and as it stands, in each query, we're fetching the exact same information, the name, the ID, and the SLA domain. Well, if we wanted to add a field to these, say guest OS name, we'd have to add it to all the queries manually. Fragments allow us to define our fields once and then reuse them in our queries. So let's see how we can do that. We'll start by defining a fragment with, you guessed it, the fragment keyword. And then we simply give it a name and then we have to base our fragment on an object. In this case, it's going to be a vSphere VM. Now we just input all of the fields we want to return. So in our case, ID, name, and effective SLA domain. Now, instead of specifying all of these fields in each individual query, we can simply add our fragment to our queries and let it handle it. So we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of our static fields here, and we'll simply pass our fragment in by placing three dots and then the fragment name. And we can do this on both queries. So when we run these, we can see we're getting the same information back. So if we wanted to include guest OS name in our query, we can simply add it to the fragment here and then let's rerun our queries. And there it is. Now we have the guest OS name. So fragments are really a great way to define a base subset of data that you want to include within your queries. All right, we're almost there. The last thing I want to discuss is the use of variables. As it stands now, our filtered VM's query is filtering on M Preston, and this is hard coded into our query. And as many of you probably know, this really doesn't scale well when we look at building out automation. Instead, we should be using an argument and passing in a variable. That way we can reuse this filtered VM query with various different filters that we want to provide. So to make our query receive a variable, the first thing we need to do is enable it. This happens much the same as if you were defining a function to receive a variable. We simply put some brackets after our query name and add our variable. Let's call this one $search. And then we need to define its type. In this case, our filter is expecting an array of strings. So we'll define it as an array of string. Now, we can simply replace our text that says M Preston with our dollar sign search variable. So with our variable defined, we now simply need to pass in a value. In the playground, we do this by defining our variables within the query variables section down at the bottom of the screen. And all we need to do here is provide some JSON. So I'll make my little curly brackets and we'll give the search variable a value. So, if we run our query now, we can see that everything is working. 
Now if we wanted a list of VMs that say contain the word demo, we can simply just change out our variable here and we'll rerun this query and we don't really have to change much syntax at all. So this chunk of code, this query is now completely reusable within the applications that we're building on top of Rubrik. All right, so hopefully now you have a better idea about how to retrieve and query data within the Rubrik Security Cloud using GraphQL. In our next video, we're going to cover off something called GraphQL mutations, which allows us to actually trigger off some workflows within the Rubrik Security Cloud. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.